Now that everyone has been working on their project for a little bit, I want to talk about some additional techniques that I'd like you guys to make sure you're um, using and that you know that are available to you um, to find additional literature. This cartoon shows what people I think view as the typical gauntlet to getting papers published, which is the peer review process and all of the stuff that goes along with it, and that can seem daunting at times. Sometimes it can be daunting to go the other way, to go from the um, accepted paper to actually getting that paper into your files uh, when you're trying to hunt that down. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. In addition to talking about um, the general approaches to looking for primary literature, I also want to highlight two things and make sure you guys know how to properly do them. And that's one, searching with Google and one, uh, using social media sites such as ResearchGate that can facilitate you finding the papers you're looking for. As Dipper here is telling you, and as I've told you before, uh, it's very, very key when you're doing the searching to take notes. Have a notepad with you and always keep track of what you've been searching for. It's so easy to get uh, sidetracked, especially when we get into the world of social media and, and search engines, to go down one particular path that might be very fruitful, but you forget what terms you were searching for, you forget the exact um, uh, topics you were looking at, etc. So keep a pad of paper by you and always note what you looked for, where you looked for it. As you guys are getting into more uh, higher levels of your research and you're looking for more particular, specific types of um, references and data sources, um, sometimes it can seem like you're walking through a forest and you're having a real hard time finding the path. And I understand that. You guys, again, always come talk to me when you have challenges, but um, don't worry. There's a lot of ways to find the path through this forest. Go over each of these very briefly, but we have, of course, our proprietary searching options that you have access to, uh, given that you're a university student. You could go to the actual source of the scholarship itself. You can spend some time in the wilds of the internet, and that's what we're mostly going to talk about today. And you can also explore archives or collections. So the first one, proprietary searching, you guys um, are all familiar with. But um, this involves using our library database, our subscription services that we pay for, uh, online collections of electronic journals, that kind of good stuff. We do that through the library. You guys know how to do that. Um, and uh, if you were to go to a different university, there's a slightly different approach probably to get into those databases. But those exist. Utilize those. Those are one of the key things that you have access to as a student that folks that are outside of a university setting do not have. Next, if we don't have those particular options available to you, you can always use interlibrary loan. And so this is a way to go about uh, getting, say, older publications or things that uh, might not be older but we just don't have access to, and to get either the physical copy, typically if it's an older uh, publication or, say, a large volume of something and you want the entirety, or to get emailed to you the scanned-in electronic version of the article. Thirdly, and this is something that I think too many of you guys forget to do, when you are stuck, go talk to a librarian. Um, you can talk to some of our uh, digital librarians or geospatial librarians, but um, any librarian can help you. And a lot of times they can really help um, unst unstick you when you're stuck and you can't seem to make progress going forward. The next most popular thing is to go to the source. You can do this in a number of ways, but the simplest thing is to go find the, the author of the um, scholarship you're searching for and just actually go to that person's, say, web page and see if they have a list of their publications, and many times they'll have a link. Note that um, when they sometimes they'll actually put the paper up, sometimes they'll just put a link to the, the journal, let's say, that published the paper. If it's an open access journal, you can get in free, no problem. Now, now, the issue with that is usually our library databases have already flagged uh, those things, and you could have already found those by using our library uh, electronic tools. So um, probably not going to be too profitable to search for that. Um, if they point you to a closed access journal article, you're going to have to pay. And sometimes that might be the only real option, say, if it's, if it's uh, a very obscure place and it's just having a hard time. You still want to try interlibrary loan, but sometimes just because of deadlines, you don't have the time to wait. And so, so closed access will be more. And of course, you could always email the author. Let me show you real quickly what I'm talking about in terms of the researcher's website. 
Okay, I just searched for uh, my colleague Richard Ambrose, uh, found him and he's at UCLA, so it looks like this first link is the right link, I'll click to that, come up and I'll find a, usually the generic profile, say of the university or the um, uh, firm or wherever the person is working. Um, but if you look closely, you'll see in this case, there's a note for a personal website. If I click there, I get to this, and this is some stuff about Rich's research. But if I go to publications, yeah, there you go. So here's his publications. Now he's taken some time to actually create these and made these relatively easy for you to find. And so for example, if it's, uh, I don't know, this, this paper here, I can click on the link and yeah, and we get taken to the actual um, publication. Uh, here's the abstract. If I try to click on the full text, it'll take me to the um, uh, 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 dialogue box. It'll take me to the journal download option and I can go ahead and do that. Again, if that didn't work, I could always uh, email the author and ask him or her if they wouldn't mind sending me a copy of their paper. Next, I want to talk about the wilds of internet searching, but since that's what I most, mostly want to focus on here, I'm going to leave that, put that on pause for a second. Instead, just touch on really briefly archives and collections. This is a fantastic resource. Um, in our local area, there's fantastic resources in Santa Barbara County, Ventura County, Los Angeles County. Um, you should not blow these things off. Um, these are maybe a collection of historical papers, artifacts, uh, aerial images, all kinds of wonderful stuff that really can deepen your scholarship. Do not ignore these oftentimes physical holdings of um, uh, archives and repositories. They can be really, really helpful to your scholarship. So please go check those out. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a professor who loves, who loves old archives. They're really, um, they're really wonderful things. But what I really want to focus on today is this notion of uh, using the incredible power of the internet that you guys have access to and maybe you don't use um, as much as you could. Two main options here. The first, obviously, what everybody does is Googling. And so um, you pretty much know how to do a lot of that, but I want to touch on how to do that uh, uh, real quickly. So here I can, I, I'm, I'm firing up my, my browser. And I'm going to type, say, the two authors I'm looking for, Smith and Wilson, let's say. I come up and I get, oh, I just got, I get a stuff about Smith and Wesson. It thinks I want to shoot people and whatever the heck. So that's not the way I want you to search. Okay, do not do that. I want you instead to come up and select advanced search. Now here I can say Smith and Wilson. And I can put these in quotes, for example, to add some specificity. And I'm going to add the plus sign here, using some of this Boolean logic to say, I definitely want this, OK? Uh, or I want, want a paper with these two authors. And then I can go in and I can tailor some other things. The next thing I want you to do is come down here to File Format. I want you to pick PDF. Now, publications are not necessarily in PDF form, but 99% of them will be. So go ahead and pick PDF. And then, depending on where we want to search, um, we might want to restrict where we're searching to um, uh, 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 domains that only have to do with, say, um, the government or a university, .edu, something of that nature. Um, so that, that, that's going to depend on how you want to modify it. But when we hit this, I hit advanced search. This is both going to search Google as well as Google Scholar, which is Google's answer to social media and the curation of academic references. So um, none of these are the ones I was specifically looking for. But for example, if they were, I could click this bad boy and I'd be taken straight to the uh, publication itself. Again, if this wasn't the exact one I wanted to do, I could refine the search, go forward and see if I could find it. It's so easy to go down the rabbit hole of Google, um, and, and, it, it, and if you're not doing this correctly, it, it'll be even that much harder to find where you're going. Um, again, I want you to be specific. Use quotation marks around the phrase or the, the full author's names. Use Boolean logic with pluses and, and minuses and wildcard characters to, um, again, add specificity to your, shirt, to your search. And again, constrain um, the types of answers you get back through all of this through the advanced search dialog box. Next, I want to flag to you a really important tool that you all have access to, we all have access to with our modern uh, worldwide web and internet uh, world that we live in. 
And that is this whole incredible value that social media can bring to um, hunting for academic information, searching for academic resources. I'm going to spend most time here talking about ResearchGate, but realize there's something very similar, academia, um, uh, .edu, there's, there's, there's other things. Um, there's so-called so non-academic platforms, things like LinkedIn, things like Facebook that you can get information. Although I think those other platforms, uh, while they can be useful, particularly the groups and the associations on those, on those entities, um, they, they really aren't optimized for hunting for academic papers. The social media platform I think will be most useful to you, that's been most useful to me in these last few months, for example, is ResearchGate. This was a site created in 2008, really launched in 2009, uh, started in Boston and then, and then migrated, I, th I believe it's based in Germany now, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, they currently have, it, they don't disclose a lot of their information, so they're one of these uh, problematic, uh, not very transparent companies, but um, they have somewhere on the order of, of north of 7 million users at last uh, report. Um, although less than a million of those folks are active users, meaning they, they do something weekly, they have updated profiles, etc. ResearchGate has a membership bias in that it's really heavily represented by scientists in the life sciences, so biology folks, uh, medicine, uh, medical researchers, that kind of stuff. Also, it's not globally representative. Um, obviously, it's in, it, it, as you'll see in a second, it's in English, but North America is overrepresented, uh, as is Europe and places like Brazil. Uh, other places, there aren't as many folks, such as uh, India, such as China, um, but uh, it's what it is. It's a growing tool. Um, so f for many of your needs, the fact that it involves uh, biology and that it, the fact that it really has a, um, a home in North America is, is good enough for you, at least for a lot of your basic research here in California. Unfortunately, ResearchGate has engaged in a lot of the baloney um, social media practices practices that so often dominate these types of firms. They've gotten a bad rap uh, for several years for doing things like sending unsolicited invitations to folks that make it oftentimes look as if it's coming from you. Similarly, they have a lot of uh, robo crawlers that go and find PDFs and put those PDFs up in its system, which in the, in the context of what I'm talking to you about today, it's a, that's, a, that's a great thing that helps you find papers. Um, but they make it look as if maybe members are more active than they actually are. So they're getting better with this, but, um, but realize they have been uh, a little bit slimy or a lot of it slimy in the past at least. ResearchGate is very similar to this uh, other social, academic social media site called Academia, um, although ResearchGate I think is much more user friendly and has, has uh, more features that are more useful to you. But at the basic level, um, they really do the same thing. They're, they're a Facebook, if you will, or a LinkedIn, if you will, for scientists. ResearchGate wants to be and is designed to be a social media hub for researchers, for scientists. They allow you to do a lot of things that you can do, say, with Facebook for your friends, but in this case, do it with your uh, academic or research colleagues. They, uh, the platform allows you to follow uh, your colleagues or people you're interested in or researchers that you think do good stuff um, and or just their papers, just the scholarship that comes from them or their labs. There's a forum uh, to post questions. You can answer questions, very specific uh, targeted questions. They allow you to do blog posts. Uh, typically, that, that's organized around reviewing papers. Uh, then, uh, mo uh, most importantly for us, it allows you to post your own papers, to post papers, but not just publish papers that we could get elsewhere, other things as well, conference talks, in-progress works, uh, posters, stuff like that. So if someone is active on this uh, site, it really is an opportunity for um, you to find uh, information and insights in their work or their scholarship that you might otherwise not be able to get. ResearchGate also uh, will uh, host discussions about uh, papers or academic topics. Something that uh, you might uh, find useful, they have a, um, a, 
DOI service that allows you to subscribe to ascribe a unique identifier um, to your work. Now, when you publish in a journal somewhere, that journal um, uh, will 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 attach a DOI to that paper, to that scholarship. But if, again, if it's something like a conference paper you might have done, or let's say you guys went and gave a talk somewhere at Western Society of Naturalists or someplace like that, um, where the talk is not published, you could um, upload that here and actually get a DOI and get a unique identifier. Um, and, uh, and that's a great thing. Not so much for you guys, but for older farts like me, some people are interested in metrics about how many people follow your research, uh, all that kind of silliness. It, it, they're mostly really um, wastes of time and, and foolish uh, ego things, in my opinion, but, but they do allow you to do that. And then uh, ResearchGate is increasingly, just really in the last six months to year, I would say, really starting to uh, post a large number of jobs, academic-related jobs. And so this might be useful, especially uh, going on to, into the future for you. At the base of the network on ResearchGate is your co-author, your collaborators, the people you do scholarship with. You can, uh, you can expand your network in, in terms of people you follow and, and just like you can on any other social media platform. But really the nucleus is the folks that you are actively engaged with. The other uh, neat thing that ResearchGate will do is it'll track when you get new followers. You get a sense of how many people uh, actually look at your scholarship in this platform, not, not in general, but, but using ResearchGate. And they'll tell you when uh, someone cites one of your papers, and uh, that's pretty cool. Now, there's other services that do that, but it, it does it uh, uh, in a much more succinct, simple way, I, I believe. Um, and also, they'll let you know when someone you're following um, has published a new paper, either a follow-on to one of their articles that you're following, or just they've, they've done something new. And so that, that's a really useful function, I think, for you guys as well, as you're engaged in your scholarship, as you're growing your understanding of the research field. So let's take a look at what ResearchGate um, actually is and what it looks like. So this is the landing page. Uh, this is my landing page. So we have a home here. Now it's going to say, hey, here's some new papers you can check out, etc. If I go to publications, it's going to tell me, um, hey, check it. There's all this stuff going on in your field. So I, with a little skim here, I can see stuff that's tailored to me. So again, the more you complete your profile and the more papers you followed, looked at, browsed, the um, algorithm here is going to get a, is going to be better at finding what is of interest to you and so things will be more tailored to you more useful now i can uh, look at this i can download it i can choose to follow the publication meaning um, if people are having a discussion about it um, if it's if uh, someone cites this in their publication which hey maybe i should go read that because um, this person thought this paper was useful maybe i should check out what they're doing etc i can i can share this with someone else that i think might be uh, of in, uh, interested in it you can send it to me or, or someone else it's a place to post questions so if you guys do have a question about something um, let's say you're in the middle of your research and you're not sure about a statistical analysis or, or something. You could post a question and say, hey, does anyone know about blah, blah, blah? Or has anyone uh, tried to solve the blah, blah, blah problem? And anyone uh, that sees these questions can answer them. And so if you see a question that you might have some insight to, you can go ahead and answer that. Uh, and again, it keeps tracks, track of all the questions. that, And you can follow a question if you think, find it of interest, etc. And then, as I said, um, something that's probably growing uh, in value to you is you, in the next couple years, you can actually um, uh, get jobs here that, again, are tailored for your interest, for your skill set. So in this case, uh, let's see what's going on. In this case, they think uh, the, the robot here thinks that I might want to be a professor at University of Cincinnati, um, uh, University of South Florida. There's the, they think maybe I might want to be the chair of geology at Tulane, um, et cetera. So a useful, useful thing there. What I next want to do is just flag. So um, I would strongly encourage you guys to consider a, a setting up an account. Again, with all our social media goings on here, you are not ever required to get on social media. But um, in this case, I think it, it could be quite useful to you and quite helpful. So uh, let's take a look at my profile. This is going to say, uh, be a roundup for me. So in this case, these are 
uh, publications that, that I've done. It, so the, it, here's a publication. It thinks, it said, hey, did you write this? Um, and in this case, I didn't write it, so I'm going to, you know, tell it uh, later that no, I didn't write that paper. Um, but of the ones that I've actually, uh, I've uploaded or it's found for me, there's 16 in the database. It's saying that, um, let's see, so I joined this, uh, this group about, uh, I don't know, six months or so ago that I joined ResearchGate about six months ago. And in that time, I've had about a thousand reads of my um, various papers. Um, They've been cited about 189 times. Now, now the citations aren't necessarily in the last six months, but um, you know they've been cited about 189 times. And then there's some silliness here. This doesn't really matter. This is how 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 important you're supposed to be, um, which comes from a whole bunch of silly sources like how how prestigious the journal is and stuff like that. Um, but then here are the things that I've put in, and uh, uh, this is in the last week. Um, people have read it five, read, read this paper five times, etc. I've gone in and I've put in uh, exp things that I'm um, interested in, so that I have some proficiency in. Uh, and it tells, says that I'm following uh, 92 people and 27 people are following me. So if I post a new paper, they'll get a notice, for example. And this has a whole thing to do awards and achievements. Now you can actually have ResearchGate generate a CV for you, generate a resume for you, if that's of interest. Um, it'll go through and pull together all your publications, etc. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to try that. Although, uh, for your uh, starting career um, stage, you don't have a ton of publications, and really, this this is optimized for people who have a lot of publications. So, um, so go ahead and try it, check it out, see what the see what it spits out for you. But probably not going to be um, a super helpful to you. Uh, th these are again. This is my again my, my publications. So they're all listed here, all the ones I've uploaded at least, um, and I can go look at those. Info is again a little more detail about uh, me, about my expertise, and where I've worked, etc. Here are the statistics about uh, me. Um, so let's see what does it say. So again, it says I have over a thousand reads uh, last week, and, and it, it's usually binned by the the past week. So last week I had eleven reads. Uh, last month, I had uh, four new citations, and last week, three people uh, viewed my profile to see if I was an idiot or not. Um, uh, there's some tracking here. So again, uh, I don't know, uh, first week of November, I had about 30 reads. Uh, November 15th, they only had about seven, back up to about 28. Um, it's bouncing all around. So I usually have between, it looks like between 10 and, and, and 30 people reading uh, one of my papers in any given week. It tells you, hey, these guys um, uh, read your paper. It says what paper. They read my paper on uh, <laughs> planting plants in, in uh, poop in the salt marsh. A very, very sophisticated paper. Um, and uh, yeah, and then uh, th this guy from New York University was reading one of uh, my papers on um, Grassland restoration. It also tells you, hey, so uh, Ecuador, I'm, I'm big in Ecuador, apparently. So that's, I'm blowing up Ecuador. Five reads uh, <laughs> last week. Uh, three in the US, uh, two from Poland, etc. It tells you things like, and then, and then again, so th th this just drills down. We don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but, but it tells you how many people glanced at your um, publication, let's say. So this is six people uh, read my summaries or looked at the, the abstract, say, of my uh, scholarship. And then um, about five people, not about, actually exactly five people download, in turn went and downloaded um, my publication. Uh, let's see, it says, what does it say? Congratulations, your article reached 20 reads. So yeah, that's great. So 20 people have read that paper. What else did it say? Yeah, this other article got 20 reads. This is very exciting. Um, most read author from uh, CSUCI last week. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, okay, for my department as well, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, so 20, so one of my papers has been cited by 20 other papers. So stuff like that. Uh, this, again, th th this thing here, this RG score is a bunch of baloney. It just sort of tells you, um, it's, an, it's another way to basically say supposedly how important you are, but it, it doesn't really, um, it's just for silly silly people that care about numbers that that think their world revolves around numbers um then of course there's alerts there's there's things of attention here there's you can send email receive email you can get notes etc so that's ResearchGate. i encourage everyone to 
uh, sign up, try it out. If you don't like it, you can always delete it and, and get get out. But I would, uh, but but check it out again. I think it is going to be a useful way for you to find additional references in new ways, separate from your reading of papers and and finding sources that way. Um, again, a lot of these authors have actual publications up. So if we come up, let's let's look at. Uh, So let's look. So again, here, here are some new things up. So here's this paper. I can download it. Here's a paper. I can download it. Here's a paper. I can download it. Now, maybe those papers you can get elsewhere from our other searching techniques. But have a look. Here's one that is um, this new Texas A&M oil spill calculator that uh, I have used in the past. Um, and this sounds really cool. But note, it's not actually up. It's not downloadable. It says request a full text. So if I click that, it's going to send a note to all the authors and say, hey, uh, you guys haven't uploaded the paper. Would you mind doing that? And they don't have to. There's no requirement they do. But it actually signals to them, hey, somebody might be interested in this. And so um, there's a decent chance that, if, again, if it's an obscure thing, hard to find, hard to get, maybe it was a paper that someone gave at a conference, this is going to let them know that actually someone is actually interested in downloading that and, and possibly using that in their scholarship. So, I'm, so therefore, there's some motivation for me to go ahead, go in, um, uh, upload this and then it'll be of value to someone. So ResearchGate is a useful tool. I want you all to try it, check it out, um, and, uh, and follow a couple people. Follow some of the professors you have or some of the authors of the papers you're looking at and see if this is a useful tool and let me know uh, at the end of the semester. Again, whatever you do, ResearchGate, Google, uh, library searching, don't forget to take notes all the time, all the time, all the time. You want to be able to know that you've been down this path and, and not double track uh, when you are in the hunt for fantastic scholarship for your research. Thanks, you guys. Talk to everyone soon.